times. Got some chocolate. Tanya's got a pizza. Lots of pizza. <laughs> so in the last episode you saw us um, look at a dinghy, while well, my dad's dinghy he wants to get rid of in the UK, but uh, we found it a bit too long and a bit too heavy and the only way that we could take down the weight was to actually take um, some wooden floorboards out of the dinghy um, and try and just have the flat bottom in there and, and then it would be light enough to get on and off the boat but when we did that uh, the bottom of the dinghy became very floppy because obviously it, it's got the stretch there to account for the uh, inflatable keel so it turned out to be a bit impractical and it just would have been heavy to get on and off the boat not only that uh, it was too long so it was 2.8 long um, and then by my calculations uh, we've only got about 2.6 before it starts to go over the either side of the coach roof and become an obstruction in the uh, on the deck. Uh, on Blocket, actually, in Sweden, we found a dinghy um, on the west coast for sale. Uh, it's a Honwave T24. Uh, I think it's 240 centimeters long and uh, it's got a six horsepower mercury engine so that should be fine now, the engine's only four years old and the owners just told me that it's still under warranty as well ideally i was looking for a dinghy uh, in hyperlon to be honest i've owned avon dinghies before and they were just the best but they've been taking over taken over by zodiac i believe and i'm not really sure where the brand's gone at the moment. Uh, the other dinghy that I was looking at was a Highfield because a lot of popular YouTube channels seem to be going along with the Highfield nowadays, um, which is a Hyperlon dinghy, uh, aluminium and floor, uh, and it's a really, it seems like one of the best dinghies that you can cruise with, but it was a bit too expensive to, um, shut up sat now. Uh, it was a bit too expensive to invest in just for a charter because when people are uh, using a dinghy on charter they may may not look after it in the best way so we're, we've chosen a PVC dinghy um, with a blow up keel as well that's hopefully light enough to get on and off the deck easily yeah we can put a good size engine on it a six horsepower will hopefully get both of us on the plane uh, quite easily I, I remember I owned a six horsepower before, um, a two stroke six horsepower, and, and that was more than enough to get two people on the plane, so I think it'll be a good size engine. So guys, if there's one thing I've got a lot of experience in in the boating world, it's about dinghies. I've grown up with dinghies all my life. I think I started dinghying when I was about, I don't know, six years old or something like that. I've had many different types of dinghies. Um, the first thing you got to think about is the size of dinghy that you want. Um, usually the dinghies start from, from a cruising point of view, probably from about 2.3 meters um, all the way up and, you know, as big as you want. But usually about 3.1, 3.4 is the bigger size of dinghies there. Um, we chose a 2.4 meter long dinghy because we wanted to fit it on the deck, basically on the coach roof. Uh, second thing you need to think about is what you want the bottom to be made of, whether you, whether you want it to be rubber or um, fiberglass or aluminium or with an inflatable keel. So I chose not to go with a rib this time, I would have preferred a rib because they cut through the water much better and they're much heavier and they're, they're a bit more stable. But I've chosen to go with the best of both worlds for this little dinghy we've got now and got an in inflatable keel. Um, which allows it to get up on the plane, uh, keeps the bow a bit higher so you don't get the splash so much. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it just cuts through the water uh, really nicely. And it's light as well, that when you get a fiberglass rib, uh, the, weight can, the weight can increase quite significantly. The aluminium ones are a bit lighter, but still they've got a lot of weight to them. So with this dinghy we've got now, um, it's, I think it weighs between 30 and 40 kilos, I think so. With two people, you can easily bring it aboard, but I can also bring it aboard myself as well. One more thing you've got to think about on the dinghy side of things is what you want it to be made out of. Now, there's two options. There's either PVC or Hyperlon. 
Uh, up here in the Nordics, it doesn't really matter for us so much because there's not that much sun and it doesn't uh, degrade the material too much. But if I was cruising the tropics, for example, I would go with Hyperlon every time. It's much more sun resistant and it's, it's, uh, it feels like a tougher material as well. Maybe slightly heavier, but the sun resistance uh, would make it for me. The next thing you should consider is how you want to power the dinghy. Now, if you just want to get from the boat to shore and you don't need to do any vast distances or anything like that, um, I haven't used these yet, uh, but I'd really recommend these Torquedo uh, electric motors. You know, the, the maintenance has got to be so much less on them. They're really light to lift uh, on and off the boat as well, so I've been seeing on the YouTube channels as well, and they're, they're really nice and simple. The lower powered uh, petrol motors are really good as well, but obviously you've got to maintain them. You've got an impeller to change. You've got the oil to change if it's a four-stroke, uh, etc. So the, there's, there's two different variants there. Now guys, if you go for the petrol engine and you go for like a two and a half horsepower, um, maybe even a three horsepower, you're going to struggle to get the dinghy up on the plane. But when I mean uh, getting on the plane, it's when the dinghy no longer sits in the water and plows through the water. It comes up on the plane and it's skimming across the water and you can go much, much faster and it can get you long distances very quickly. And also it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, if you're one person in the dinghy, my rule of thumb that I've learned over the years is you need probably at least three and a half to four horsepower to get it up on, on that plane. If you are two people, uh, a four stroke six might just get you there if the dinghy is a little bit longer. Now the problem that we had is that the dinghy is short, it's only 2.4 meters. So even with a six horsepower four stroke, it couldn't get us up on the plane because it was stuck in the hole. It was stuck just digging the back down basically. Quite plain, even with the weight forward. If you want to get on the plane with two people really easily, I would recommend at least 10 horsepower on your dinghy. And also to get the dinghy a little bit longer as well. Um, because with our with our 2.4 meter dinghy, um, it really sits down in that hole and it's even with a 10 horsepower, it takes a little bit of manipulation, especially in a bit of waves, to get it up on the plane. So yeah, I'd recommend at least a 10. I've even heard of people with a 10 horsepower um, pulling a bodyboarder along quite nicely behind. Uh, it's, got a, it's got a lot of grunt there, but the dinghy needs to be a little bit longer to get it on the plane with a couple of people, even three people on with a, with a 10 horsepower and, and some weight in as well. This is gonna be an interesting one. I may have done something a little stupid, we never know, or it may turn out really, really good. However, I've gone and swapped something out. Check this out. Let's unbox it, shall we? Can you guess what it is now? So, got ourselves a new dinghy engine. Brand spanking new. I think this is going to give us more than enough power, to be honest. I went with the went with the two-stroke this time, two cylinders, so it's got a bit more torque, and uh, I just prefer the sound of two strokes. Yeah, it's a bit more un unenvironmentally friendly, which is a bit a bit bad. That's why they're not selling the two strokes anymore. But I really prefer the weight and the and the performance that you get out of the two strokes. So to be tested, we'll see. But look at this. This is a, looks like a fantastic engine, a 9.8 horsepower out of this little thing. That's going to be awesome. Like I said, it might be a bit stupid because the dinghy is only rated for 6 horsepower. I picked it up for £1,200, I think, and they're not making these anymore due to the um, regulations with two strokes. So I picked up probably one of the last ones that you can buy. So, yeah. Pretty excited to test it out though, that's for sure. What's going on Benton? What are we doing today? As usual, Benton does not want to get in the car, um, but today we're going to test the new outboard engine. You just saw the unpacking, uh, I'm not sure how this is going to go because maybe the engine's a little bit too big for the dinghy, but we'll see. I've got to put the oil mixture right as well for the two-stroke, I think it's 25 to 1 for the first 10 hours. So. Yeah, so off we go this. Come on, in the car. Good boy, good boy, good boy. 
little trip out with uh, the Tahatsu 9.8 two stroke. Beautiful engine so far, so smooth, so quiet. Twin cylinder, 9.8 horsepower, brilliant. Benton the dog is with me. How are you doing, Benton? Hey. Unfortunately, I can't run the engine up above half because you've got to run it in in the first 10 hours. But I've just given it 10 minutes at idle and then the first two hours is less than half and then up to 80%. And then after 10 hours, it's uh, 100%. So. Fantastic engine. Perfect for this little thing. Weighs about 28 kilograms. Just giving it less than half throttle now and up on the plane so easily. Brilliant. So, uh, me and Benton are just exploring this little island here and uh, trying to work out what is causing this dung on the island. Like, I mean, this can't be birds. Like, what the hell is it? Little review of the Honwave T240. You can see that it's got a little inflatable keel uh, on the bottom. It's actually proven to be pretty effective. Now I've got the, I've used the uh, supboard pump actually to pump it up so I can get the pressures right because the tubes have to be at 0.25 bar and the bottom, the keel has to be at 0.8 bar and I couldn't get it up to that pressure with the foot pump so now it's kind of hard and everything, it doesn't bubble up and lose its shape, so it's, it's really nice. What are you doing, Benton? Yeah, I'll get you some water in it. Yeah, I, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> oh no! Uh oh, is it slippery, buddy? Is it slippery? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, going to shake on me, yep. But yeah, there doesn't seem to be a shallow water setting on it, unless I haven't found it yet. It's got to be 28, 29 degrees today in Sweden, which is really warm for here. Um, but yeah, it's nice. Look who's back! It's the Hansa 385 that was grounded um, about a month and a half ago, two months ago now. So I'm really glad that it's back in the water. That's nice to see. Just check out my little repair on the front there. It's fine, you can't even see it. One option we had installed for, specifically for the Scandinavian archipelago was this bowsprit or peak they call it. Um, it makes it a lot easier with this ladder that slides out basically so you can get on and off the boat onto the rocks. Um, but I am wondering where the original one went actually, so I've got to track that down because I might want to put that back on eventually because the problem is with that, I'm not going to be able to get a Rockner anchor on or a better anchor later on in Aurora's life when we uh, set sail for good <laughs> or at least do some long-term cruising. So since recording this one actually I found that there are other options out there, other really good anchors that you can get without the um, uh, the roll bar on top. Uh, so that might be an option for us to get it in that peak or bowsprit that we have. Um, one of these options is the Ultra Anchor that uh, Distant Shores has recently reviewed and they're really happy with that anchor so it's expensive but um, in the future yeah we may give that a go and, and take a closer look at that one. Anyway Thanks for watching this tech episode. I know there was a lot of talking from my side, but um, yeah, hope it's been beneficial to you guys and see you next time. Thanks then. Bye now.